Chapter 601 Powerful Power Hansen ascended the cliff wall a dozen meters or so, and in a few more steps, he would reach the lizard creature. Hansen had secretly activated his gene lock, and with it, he could sense the creature's desire to turn around. When it did, he also had the foresight to know the creature would extend its tongue. In the next second, the lizard shot out its long, red, spiky tongue towards him. Being able to tell what was coming felt amazing. Hansen felt as if he could predict everything. Hansen leapt away from the cliffside. Borrowing strength from the air, he dodged the giant, toxic-looking tongue and returned to the cliffside near the creature. Unsheathing his silver sword, he quickly chopped its head off. This result even surpassed his own expectation as the head quickly dislodged from the creature and fell to the ground. His sword went through it like a hot knife through butter, and it was enough to make Hansen question whether or not it was actually a sacred blood creature. Sacred blood creature hunted, mountain lizard. The beast's soul was not acquired. Consume its flesh to obtain a random numeric amount of sacred geno points, ranging from 0 to 10. But the voice confirmed what Zhu Ting had told him, that it was indeed a sacred blood creature. Hansen was chuffed. He now knew for sure that having unlocked his gene lock, his base power had increased by a dizzying amount, not just his abilities of perception. Right now, even sacred blood creatures could be killed with little to no effort. This was powerful power. Zhu Ting, who remained at the bottom, continued looking up as if he was frozen. He did not say a word. Even he was shocked at how easy it was for Hans and to slay the sacred blood creature. Ping. The mountain lizard now fell to the ground, as did Hans Senator quickly. Zhu Ting sprang to help pick his master up. But then he said, you asshole. I asked you to help me out and weaken the fiend. I didn't ask you to kill it. Did you get the beast's soul? I was careless. Sometimes I don't know my own strength. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hansen gave a wry smile while he apologized, and then he continued. But I didn't get the beast soul, really. How about I make it up to you by finding another sacred blood beast soul, eh? I'll weaken it and let you get in the final hit. Does that sound okay? Zhu Ting calmed down after hearing that, but he still had to double check. So he asked, but you really didn't get the beast soul? I, Hansen. In the name of the deities that command our existence, swear a proclamation that I did not receive a beast soul. If I did, smite me, O heavenly beings. Hansen jovially said aloud, What kind of oath is that? Do you think I'll believe that? Few people actually die from swearing such a thing. Swear again, and this time, say that you will never ever have a wife. Zhu Ting said. Hansen did as he requested and said it, which comforted him fully. They then hauled the mountain lizard's body onto a summoned mount and decided to return to the shelter. Honestly, though, how have you achieved what you have? You have only been in the second god sanctuary for less than a year, yet you have grown so much and achieved so many things. You haven't unlocked your gene lock, have you? On his way back, Zhu Ting watched Hansen with fervent curiosity. Now, he couldn't help but ask. Opening a gene lock is not that hard, Hansen told him, without blinking. Zhu Ting wasn't sure if what he had said was a confirmation, but he chose to believe that he had indeed. After all, Hansen had been in the second god's sanctuary for a way too short a time. Back in the shelter, Hansen returned to his room to see a woman reclining on a chair reading his books. Although he could only see her shadow from the doorway, Hansen already knew that it was Queen. Her body was far too special, and its beauty was difficult not to recognize. Hansen did not expect Queen to receive word and come to see him so soon. It looked as if she was taking his inclusion within her team as a serious thing. Ping Ching said you were willing to join my team? Queen put down her book and turned around to look at Han Sr. Yes, I am. Hansen nodded. What made you change your mind so soon? Queen asked. I've had it rattling around my head for the past few days, and with my sacred Geno points almost being at max capacity, I thought this would be a good time for me to find out if there are any creatures above the sacred blood class. So, yes, after giving it much thought, I have decided to join you, Hansen said. You won't be tagging along to watch, you know. You will have to obey my command. These creatures are extremely dangerous, and those who have unlocked their gene lock can still perish in the blink of an eye. Especially you. So, when the team is fighting, you must adhere to my orders and leave that lone wolf nonsense behind. Queen told him with a stern face. I know that. Hansen nodded. He then said, but there is something I would like to tell you. 
My pet has this special ability that causes creatures of the surrounding area to fall back. I am not sure if it will have the same effect on these super creatures. And what's more, my pet cannot attack creatures. I already guessed it made creatures flee, but I had expected it to fight back. The former ability is what I value the most, anyway, Queen said. Wait, so that's all you want? Hansen froze. Queen then told him, there are a lot of creatures around this powerful one we have set our sights on. Although we are not afraid of them, fighting them alongside this bigger super creature would prove too much of a hassle. Not to mention dangerous. With your pet in tow, we would not have to worry about the others, which would allow us all to focus on the primary target. Now Hansen knew why Queen wanted his presence so badly. You sort things out here this night. Tomorrow, you can come with me. I'm only passing through today, so I thought I'd stop by. For attacking a powerful creature, I already have a plan in motion. When you come with me, however, you'll have to meet and greet the team. If they have no objection, we'll have no problem making you a member, Queen said. Wait, so you aren't the absolute decider? Hansen frowned. When I created this team, we established a rule. For the acceptance of a new team member, a unanimous vote must take place. Although I am the team's leader, I cannot override this rule. Okay. The next day, Hansen arranged for others to deal with the shelter's business in his time away, and with the silver fox in hand, followed Queen out of the ice field. With the silver fox in their company, they were not hassled by any intervening creatures, and before long, they arrived at the ocean side. There, Queen summoned a whale for a ship and rode it alongside Han Sr. The silver fox was quite amazing, as no creatures of the sea decided to harass them there, either. This seemed to satisfy Queen, as she now looked at the silver fox with greater kindness. But Hansen couldn't enjoy the same treatment, for she had not spoken to him once for the duration of their journey together. And the way she looked at him was cold. Hansen understood that she was still angry with him over what happened that day. Knowing his place, and acknowledging the need to give her space, he avoided talking with her in fear of increasing the tension between them. They sailed across the sea for two days before they caught sight of a black island on the horizon. Queen beelined for it, clearly marking it as her destination. Chapter 602, Maelstrom As they neared the island, they espied three people standing on the shoreline. Two men and a woman, each clad in beast soul armor. They looked refined and elegant, and it was plain to see that these were not ordinary evolvers. Big sis, what took you so long? The woman yelled from afar. The woman was quite short, and despite looking quite beautiful, displayed a hint of laziness. There was a rock in the road, so I had to delay my arrival by an extra couple of days, Queen explained. Although she was a proud woman, she was not unreasonable. Big sis, who is this man? The woman seemed surprised to see Hansen standing by Queen. After the two men greeted Queen as well, they too seemed to have been alarmed by Hansen's presence. His name is Hansen and I wish to propose his inclusion on our team, Queen merely said, forgoing any detailed introduction. You must be an elite, for Big Sis to personally invite you on our team. Can I ask, what is your gene lock power? The woman asked Hansen with curiosity. The two men remained silent, and they continued to lock Hansen within their gazes. Certainly, then, they cared deeply about Queen's reasoning for bringing aboard someone else. Oh, me? I haven't even unlocked by gene lock yet. Hansen lied. Since Queen only said she needed the help of the Silver Fox, he didn't need to step up to the plate and disclose himself fully. Now, he could just follow the team from behind as Queen had personally told him to. Super creatures were nothing to trifle with, and the image of the blue seahorse was still fresh in his mind. If the opportunity to avoid risks was available to him, then he would gladly refrain from engaging with such fearsome enemies. You didn't unlock your gene lock. The three of them called out, simultaneously. After looking at Hansen with bewilderment, they then turned to look at Queen. Queen attempted to explain Hansen's situation by saying, I have tested this personally on my journey here. His silver fox is special. Whenever it is around, no other creatures are, either. If that is true, then why not just buy the pet? There is no need for this slouch to join the team, one of the men said. This man was downright handsome, with blonde hair and emerald eyes. The other man and woman did not say anything yet, as they were a little unsure as to how they felt. Sorry, this pet is not for sale. Hansen quickly shut him down. The blonde man looked to say something again, but Queen prevented him. She said, 
According to the rules we established upon this group's formation, everyone is provided the opportunity to say their piece. If you don't want this person on our team, then feel free to say so. If that is the case, he will be gone. But I am the one who brought him here, so no one can touch him. An uneasy silence followed, which Queen broke by asking, Where is the rest of the team? Have they still not arrived yet? Big sis, it sounded like the three of them were delayed by something. But I'm sure they'll be along shortly, the woman said. Well, in that case, let's wait until they have arrived. We can discuss and vote on Han Sin's inclusion when they get here, Queen said. The handsome blonde man then said, Pa, we don't have to wait. I disagree and don't want him. Did you forget that one of our founding laws stated that anyone who joined must have unlocked their gene lock? This guy wants to be some Klingon, using his pet while he reaps the benefit of the potential slaying of a super creature? I understand, but his pet may prove vital to our current struggle. It could save us a lot of trouble, Queen rebutted, shooting the handsome man with her stiletto gaze. Yes, tyrant. To have someone like this isn't such a bad idea. The woman was in agreement with Queen, and so she joined in and tried to convince the handsome man. The handsome man called Tyrant now looked cold. He said, I would rather struggle than share the rewards of actually slaying a super creature with a noob who hasn't unlocked their first gene lock. Queen frowned at Tyrant adamance about Han Sin's exclusion from the team. She nodded and said, Okay, fine. If that is how things will be, I'll return him home. After that, Queen climbed on top of the whale's back again with Han's senator she apologized to him, saying, I am sorry for wasting your time. This was a pointless journey. It's okay. Hansen shook his head and gave a wry smile. He didn't want to risk his life, and that's why he did not admit that he had unlocked his gene lock, but he didn't expect that he would be rejected by the group and shot down so quickly. He had only just arrived here, and now he was to be sent back. Hansen wasn't too happy about this, but he did not think it would be a good idea to admit the truth now, either. So, he prepared himself to return home with Queen. As Queen prepared to take off with the whale, Hansen noticed the coming of someone who was riding a sea beast. He was gliding across the waves at a furious pace. Before long, he had arrived on the island. Strangely, however, he looked severely wounded and was covered in a mass of burns. Many were dressed in hastily wrapped bandages, but even so, you could tell he was not in good shape. Horny old man, are you okay? Where is Shang Qing? Queen dismounted, and everyone gathered around him. The other woman quickly moved to help support him. On our way here, we came across a creature that breathed fire. It was too powerful and I got separated from Shang Qing. I don't know if the rest made it away, horny old man bleakly told the group, with a face as white as a ghost. The faces of the group were horrified, but they could not do anything. To encounter a super creature was always a frightening, life-threatening ordeal, but to stumble across one in the sea was a nightmare. He was lucky to have made it out alive. The burns that had scorched horny old man's body were not mild. The group helped carry him down to the shore and tried to remedy his wounds. When Hansen saw the burn marks, he could not help but ask himself, did they meet the blue seahorse? Lazy cat, you stay here and tend to horny old man me, tyrant, and Sky Jealousy will go and take a look. We'll see if we can find them. Queen leapt onto the back of her whale as she spoke. Tyrant and Sky Jealousy summoned their own sea rides, and they all hurriedly took off in the direction Horny Old Man pointed. When they reached the area Horny Old Man told them about, they split up and tried to look for the missing people. Hansen was still on the whale, sitting next to Queen. Despite looking for the missing persons, they weren't able to find a trace. It was mostly likely that they had died. It looks like Queen and her people haven't yet killed a single super creature, despite the fact that they have unlocked their gene lock. Humans in the Second God Sanctuary are still struggling with their overwhelming strength, it seems. Hansen's mind was alert. When he first unlocked his gene lock, he was extremely happy about it. But now he felt as if its status carried a certain weight to it that he had not realized previously. The thought that a few people, who had striven to unlock their first gene lock as much as Hansen had, were now dead. They were taken out by a super creature in the sea in no time at all. It terrified him. Queen, Tyrant, and Sky Jealousy rendezvoused in a location they had established. Their faces looked dim, a clear indication that they had no luck in searching for their missing compatriots. Let's go back to the island first. It is not safe to remain in these waters. Queen was immediately decisive, afraid something might happen if they remained. 
quickly. They returned. What do we do now? Even if they were killed, you were not even able to recover their bodies? Horny old man is still injured. Are we still going after the creature on the island? Lazy cat frowned. Of course we are. Otherwise, our time here will have been wasted. Tyrant coldly said. But right now, only the three of us remain. What if it really is? Lazy Cat trailed off and did not finish her sentence. Still, everyone knew what she meant. Chapter 603 White Tiger How about we allow this temporary friend of ours to join us? Sky Jealousy suggested, her presence breathing out an aura of elegance. Tyrant furrowed his brows at the prospect but did not say anything in opposition. If the others had arrived without issue, he wouldn't have given the idea a second thought. But now, there were only five of them left. If they wanted to prove the existence of the creatures they sought, bringing Hansen and the Silver Fox along to shoo off any additional mobs would be a great help. What does temporary mean? Hansen skewed his eyebrows as he asked. Give us a price and we will hire you as a sells word or mercenary, Tyrant coldly said, still unwilling to offer a formal position in their fellowship. Hansen looked at Queen as she calmly said, No matter what you decide, I will have you returned home without injury. When Hansen heard Queen say this, he smiled and replied, Fine, you can hire me. I must warn you, however, I am expensive. I almost suspect you would not be able to afford me. How much do you want? Tyrant continued to look at Hansen with a stone-cold attitude. Well, the Silver Fox and I count as two people. Therefore, we will accept one sacred blood beast soul each. We won't settle for lower than that, Hansen stated. He wanted to receive some sort of benefit from this excursion, even if he hadn't come expecting any. And since he had come all this way anyway, he wanted to see how they planned on fighting a super creature. With someone now paying him to watch, there was no reason for him to decline. Formally becoming a member of Queen's team wasn't too important to him. After all, her team wasn't the only super creature hunting team in the Second God Sanctuary. So even if he wasn't accepted here, he was bound to be accepted elsewhere. Okay. Tyrant did not even blink before agreeing. He gave Hansen one sacred blood beast soul and then said, This is a deposit. After we are done, you can have the other. I like that you are quick to make decisions. I have no problem with that. Hansen accepted Tyrant's terms. After Hansen accepted, the others gathered around to form a plan of action. First, they would need to find the creature. They did have a plan initially, but it had been made under the assumption all members would be present and available for combat. Now, with only five of them remaining, they'd have to come up with another plan. Horny Old Man was injured, too, so that left only four battle-worthy team members. Hansen was now a part of the team, as well. After Hansen heard them discuss their predicament, he quickly understood the gravity of the situation. Deeper inland, it was said, resided a certain white tiger. Upon visiting the island, someone on the team had spotted this creature, which appeared to be encased in a whirlwind of some sort. This suggested it had the ability to harness the wind itself. They had all decided to come to the island today to fight this creature that had been appropriately named White Tiger. They had no plan to kill it just yet, only to get a feel for its power and accurately gauge the extent of its strength. With Hansen here, we do not have to worry about any of the additional mobs that populate the island. The only drawback to his inclusion is a reduction of any extra goodies we might collect from slaying them. Okay. So who will tank and try to withstand the tiger's first strike? Lazy Cat worriedly inquired. Tyrant stepped up and said, I will do it. I recently came into possession of a sacred blood shield. If it really is a super creature, I should be able to block its paws at least twice. Okay, so that is established. Tyrant will go in and block its attack first. I have drawn a map of the surrounding area. Sky Jealousy, you will go here. Queen went into great detail, explaining the plan. She had developed all sorts of contingencies, too, for if anything were to go wrong during their assault. Hansen wasn't included in the battle plans. All he had to do was stand a fair distance away from the creature, holding the silver fox to ensure no other monsters came near. Hansen had no complaints. Queen and the others worked well together. He had only come here to watch, but he also thought if he were to join in, he might interfere with the synergy the others had with each other. However, Hansen was well acquainted with the powers super creatures possessed, and he didn't think Queen and her team had what it took to bring one down. Hansen was worried that the Silver Fox might also end up chasing the White Tiger off, but these fears were soon allayed.
From among three hills in the distance, a monstrous roar sounded, accompanied by a gusting wind. It was undoubtedly the White Tiger, and since it was still nearby, this most likely meant no other super creature would fear the Silver Fox, either. It felt as if a tornado was now racing down from the hills, and the White Tiger in its midst would soon be upon them. Get ready to fight! When Queen issued her command, Tyrant and the others quickly assumed their positions and awaited the monster's arrival. There were supposed to be a great deal of other monsters on the island, but only the tiger and its wind came for them. No other creature could be seen, and this allowed the others to confirm the silver fox's ability for themselves. Hansen secretly turned on his gene lock, which pushed his seventh sense to the max. With it, he could see the white tiger running at them from a mile away. Compared to many other creatures he had encountered, the white tiger wasn't so big. It was only about four meters in length, its body was snow white, and its eyes glistened like blood rubies. The white tiger was now carried on the wind it employed, and it ran towards them on the air, no different than how it would run on land. If it could fly in the sky without wings, then the creature could certainly harness the wind for its own devices. The white tiger looked angry, and the momentum that drove him in their direction was powerful. Although it wasn't too big, its presence exerted a pressure on them. It was almost like a champion, descending from the sky. The faces of Queen and her team were bleak. Hansen saw this, then fell back a bit with the silver fox in his arms. He was afraid of super creatures and really wanted to avoid them. It felt as if it was only dumb luck that had allowed him to defeat one back in the first god's sanctuary. The super creatures that populated the second god's sanctuary had a crushing power unlike anything else. If the baby silver fox had the ability to kill a person who had unlocked their gene lock in one hit, whatever the white tiger could do would be much worse. The silver fox now saw the white tiger, and it too looked nervous. Its hair rose up on its ends, and it looked at the tiger with hostility. Hansen held the silver fox tight, not allowing it to do anything unusual. Although the silver fox was powerful, he didn't think it had what it took to defeat the adult white tiger. The white tiger continued to traverse the air, but it was now only a mere dozen meters away from them. It raised its paw and whipped it through the air. As if the atmosphere was breaking in two, violent gusts of wind splintered out to attack the team. Tyrant shouted and raised his shield, his body clad in golden armor. His shield presented a phalanx of steel, blocking the arrows of wind that came towards him. Dong! After the loud noise, Tyrant opened his eyes to see the shield and his arms shatter. A sacred blood shield, destroyed in an instant. Tyrant's hand had also been damaged. It was bleeding badly, and there was a tear in his thenar space. The faces of the team members changed. The power of the White Tiger was even greater than they had expected, and it only took a brush of the arid control to annihilate Tyrant's defenses. Chapter 604 Fall Back Plan C Queen yelled as her body shining purple. She was making a move. Tyrant's body shone gold, like a heavenly being. He held a big black lance in his hands, which he used to thrust at the tiger. Lazy Cat also went into action. Despite her short and stout stature, which had led Hansen to believe she would be slow-moving, she was nimble and quick. Like the tiger itself, she harnessed the power of the wind. Sky Jealousy's hand held a sleek sword, the blade of which was thinner than a cicada's wing. After a low swing, a strong breath of frosted air was cast out of it. It looked like the sort of skill that would belong to someone from the Shue family. The white tiger's purpose was very clear, it seemed to target Queen. The wind that was cast out of its paws resembled projectile claws that soared through the air towards her. Queen's breast jiggled rhythmically as the purple light shone from within her body. Her long, incredible legs carried her with tremendous strength as she ducked to the side to avoid the incoming attack. The green claw wind she dodged past her by and sliced a boulder in two. Dong! One of Lazy Cat's daggers struck towards the tiger. Then Sky Jealousy's sword and Tyrant's lance attempted to pierce their foe together. But something scary happened. The tiger's fur ruffled with an additional stream of wind. Lazy Cat's dagger, Sky Jealousy's sword, and Tyrant's lance fell short of the beast, as if their weapons were shielded from the tiger's skin by a thick, ardent, invisible shell of wind. Roar! The white tiger's body shook as it looked to the sky and roared. A horrid wind picked up, and a cyclone burst forth from its deafening cry. Catcha! Catcha! The cyclone weaved itself around the weapons that had tried to draw blood from the white tiger, and it twisted them out of shape. 
Only Tyrant's lance, which was incredibly heavy and durable, remained unbent. A few deep scratch marks affected its surface. The three of them fell back, unable to hear a thing as a loud ringing pounded in their heads from the sonic blast. Their heads were in pain. Fall back. Fall back now. Queen screamed and signaled. She summoned a dagger and threw it towards the tiger. The knife cracked the air as it traveled and looked as if it were about to impale itself in the tiger's eye. Roar. The white tiger cried out again. A frightening storm of wind coursed out of its mouth, becoming a solid slab of gale force terror. It deflected the incoming knife. Boom. The knife was blasted away, shattering into little more than glitter before the tiger's face. Like the twinkling of stars and sparks in the sky, the wind scattered the remains of the knife. Hansen was shocked. That knife was a one-time used sacred blood beast's soul. It was wretchedly powerful, but it couldn't even deal a single scratch to the white tiger. The tiger's fury was triggered by her surprise knife throw, and it leapt towards Queen for retribution. But Queen was quick on her feet, and, like a graceful goddess, she was able to dance away from the tiger's claws. Han Sen's eyes watched her with admiration, and he deeply respected Queen's heavenly go. It was as efficient as his own Dong Shen Sutra, but they both yielded their own particular benefits. Facing this white tiger and avoiding its attack was a testament to her dexterity. Tyrant and the others followed Queen's orders and quickly turned to fall back and escape from the beast. The white tiger was far more powerful than they expected it to be. It was unique, unlike any other creature they had seen before. There was no hope of competing with it, so they hastily retreated as soon as the order was given. What are you doing standing there? Go. Lazy Cat yelled at Hansen while she ran. It seemed as if they wholly trusted Queen's own ability to fall back once they had gotten clear. Hansen nodded, and with the silver fox in his arms, he pulled back. He didn't return at the same speed as the others did, though, and so he stayed behind them. Although they were confident in Queen's heavenly go, Hansen was the only one there who had learned it. He understood Queen's position and situation more than anyone else did. Heavenly Go was an incredible talent, and it was currently eluding a beast as monstrous as the White Tiger right now. But Queen's foe was imbued with the power of wind, and its speed was something else. No matter how effective her Heavenly Go was, she still couldn't shake the chasing tiger, and it would only take one misstep for her to meet her demise. After all, she was just human. If she could not get rid of the White Tiger in time, she would inevitably make a mistake. Even if she remained flawless, it was only a matter of time before she exhausted her energy, and when that time came, death would await her. Hansen was thinking of how he might help Queen. They had a history together, and she was the one who taught him his heavenly go in the first place. Queen was leading the tiger to the beach and still, Hansen could not come up with an idea. Hansen understood what she sought to do, by attempting to use the sea to halt the tiger's advance. The white tiger had an affinity for the wind, so its abilities in water must not be very good. An idea then struck him, so he turned and went off in another direction. What are you doing? Don't run off. Tyrant called out to him. Ignoring him, Hansen summoned his golden growler and ran to the beach. With his own knowledge of heavenly go and the proficiency of his seventh sense, he could gauge where Queen was planning to go. He wanted to help. The white tiger was furious, and Hansen was worried Queen might not hold out until she got to the shoreline. Hey, what are you doing? Stop. Lazy Cat yelled at Hansen's fleeing shadow. Just ignore him. This is why I cannot allow people such as that to earn a place on this team. Tyrant spat. The three of them saw Hansen head away from Queen's current position, with no idea of what he was hoping to achieve. Pretending not to hear anything, Hansen carried on. He wasn't an official member of the team, either, so he did not see why he had to explain his actions to the others. This test was already over, they had learnt of the White Tiger's power, and they had failed in their attempts to attack it. He feared no one might ever be able to kill it. Hansen continued riding Golden Growler to the shore and arrived before Queen did, since she kept having to switch her direction to avoid the White Tiger. He could see her approaching from a distance. She was bleeding having sustained many injuries, and it looked as if her beast's soul armor could break at any second. Fortunately, they weren't grievous wounds. Her ability to reach the ocean side was not compromised. Hansen gave a long sigh and said to himself, Queen is magnificent. If I was in her position, I don't think I'd last half as long. Hansen then went silent for a bit. 
He put away his golden growler and went into the sea. There was no use for him on the shore, so he had to get ready to meet up with Queen. Chapter 605 Pick Up Hansen hadn't been in the sea long before he saw Queen approaching. Like an arrow, she bolted into the sea. The blood on her body brought a misty haze of red flowers to the water, and it looked beautiful. He then saw a flash of white light descend across the tumultuous waves of the sea, and it violently scraped and clawed its way across the sea surface. When the tiger brought its paws down on the water, the seas parted in half, creating a trench of a few dozen meters. It looked as if the tiger wasn't yet willing to quit its pursuit. The purple light in Queen's body was shining, and she now clutched a lance in each hand. They were both dyed purple. She quickly turned around to block an incoming attack. Dawn. Both lances were destroyed, which prompted Queen to say, Hum. Leading from her chest, she was knocked further into the sea. Ping. Queen was driven into the seabed, forming a deep hole in the shape of her body. This hit put her in a critical status. Although the white tiger would not swim, it continued to swing its paws. The violent gust of wind drove the sea mad, producing waves that were 30 feet high. Many coursed through the waters to slice at the seabed. Queen resisted succumbing to the pain that engulfed her. She dodged the white tiger's attacks as she tried swimming deeper and deeper into the sea. Crap. This white tiger is too much. Hansen was planning to meet up with Queen under the sea, but he hadn't counted on the white tiger being as feral as it was. Going down there now would be useless, so he simply stayed where he was, hoping Queen could continue dodging the creature's assault. But the hit Queen had received was terrible, and it affected her performance a great deal. It was already hard enough for a person to maneuver in the sea, and now Hansen could see she was about to miss her next dodge. Gritting his teeth, Hansen took the plunge and went under towards Queen. Queen was still struggling. She noticed a shadow coming right for her, and after squinting for greater clarity, saw that it was Hans Sr. Hansen pulled Queen deeper into the sea. He was incredibly dexterous in the sea, so he was far more mobile than Queen underwater. Hold me. Hansen put Queen on his back and told her to grab his waist. Then, with full speed, he sped off into darker waters. The white tiger was not keen to give up, so it continued casting its murderous gusts down into the sea. But Hansen was like one of the merfolk as he swam across the seabed with great speed, effortlessly dodging each of the tiger's attacks. Queen was grabbing Hansen tight, and she felt touched. She had never expected Hansen to come and save her like he had. Even in the sea, Hansen was using the formation taught to him by the Dong Shin Sutra. He kept maneuvering and switching position to dodge the tiger as he went, as pure speed wouldn't have cut it. But still, the white tiger was not willing to let them go. It wasn't until they were at a depth of 80 meters that the tiger gave up its attacks. At that depth, even the ferocious bullets of wind could not damage them. But the white tiger was still in pursuit, for wherever Hansen swam, the tiger hovered above. It was not going to give up its prey so easily, and it most certainly wasn't going to allow them to swim up to the surface. Crap! Is it a dog? Hansen had already swum 300 meters deep without being able to shake its chase. He cursed it in his heart and continued swimming deeper. After swimming for half an hour, Hansen was around 500 meters deep, but it was still to no avail. From above the brackish waters, the tiger continued to watch them. Hansen was preparing to swim even deeper, but then he noticed something was wrong with Queen. He turned around to take a look at her, and her face was not looking good. It wasn't because of the injury she had sustained, however, it was because she was suffocating. Hansen was shocked. After he learned Dong Shin Sutra, he was able to breathe underwater. Even the silver fox had this ability. Alas, Queen did not. If she hadn't been injured, she could have remained under the sea for several hours, but she had taken a blow to the chest. Her lungs were damaged, which made it difficult for her to remain underwater as she was. Queen gestured to Han's sound, telling him that she wanted to return to the surface. She did not want to go up merely for air, but also to allow Hansen a chance of escaping their current predicament. Hansen pulled her close and shook his head. He looked into her eyes, touched her face, and sealed her lips with his own. There was a pleasant taste to her kiss. Her eyes opened wide at the sight of Hansen, whose face was directly in front of hers. But she quickly understood what he was trying to do. She didn't attempt to push him back, as she initially desired, and instead swallowed the pleasant taste he was providing her with. She was no longer suffocating, and she felt rejuvenated. 
When her body was relieved, she pushed Hansen away and grabbed his waist once again. Then they swam deeper. When Queen could no longer hold her breath, Hansen gladly breathed more air into her lungs. After doing this a few times, Hansen had swum several thousand meters below the sea. Eventually, the white tiger gave up its chase and returned to the island. Hansen was still worried, though. To ensure absolutely safety, he swam for another dozen miles and then returned to the surface. When they were back below the sky, the tiger was nowhere to be seen. Then, Queen summoned her whale. She quickly climbed onto it and fell down. Her face looked pearly. The wound in her chest was deep, and it hadn't had the chance to heal, due to being in the water for so long. She had also suffered much blood loss. Hansen quickly searched himself and Queen, but realized the package they had brought with them was gone. They had no curatives or medical items. It's okay. I'll be able to hold on. Cough. Cough. Queen managed to maintain her composure, and if weren't for the gaping wound, it would be difficult to tell she had been severely injured. But having damaged her lung, even speaking caused her to spit out some blood. Just hold on. Hansen used his hands to tear off some of her battle suit, clearing the area around her wound. The beast's soul armor had already been destroyed by the white tiger, and the battle suit beneath was damaged. Hansen ripped it easily, exposing her chest. A pair of massive, snow-white breasts presented themselves to Hans Senator, but they were damaged, a nasty gash cutting across them. Hansen wasn't sure whether or not to be aroused by the sight. Queen's eyes revealed her awkwardness over the situation, but she did not move. All she did was blush. Under their current circumstances, Hansen wasn't in the mood to admire her body, so he lifted the silver fox and placed it on her chest. He then told it, Silver fox, please help. The silver fox looked at Hansen and then turned to look at Queen. It then started licking her snow-white skin. After the silver fox had licked her for a brief while, her body began to tremble. The wound that had already started to show signs of infection sealed shut. With the bleeding stopped, the area looked better and better each second. Chapter 606 Queen, She Who Cannot Calm Down Queen felt as angry as she did awkward, having no idea what Hansen was doing. But when she looked down at the afflicted area, she noticed the wound was starting to fade away as the silver fox licked her. She stared at the creature in bewilderment. Hansen looked at the silver fox, but his eyes subconsciously moved to look elsewhere. He noticed Queen was breathing quite rapidly and her chest was beating hard. The jiggling almost caused Hansen to lose all composure. Queen was surprised to see the silver fox possess this ability. For a brief moment, she forgot all about Hansen being near her. When she heard Wretched panning to her side, she looked over, shocked, to see Hansen unabashedly staring at her breasts. Her face turned red and she moved her hands to cover her exposed chest. But with the silver fox on top of her, and the size of the breasts themselves, she couldn't hold them. All she could do was yell, Are you still looking? Oh, I'm sorry. Hansen used his hands to shield his eyes. Queen almost fainted in embarrassment. Although Hansen put his hands in front of his eyes, he made sure to keep taking peeks through the quick shuffling of his fingers. Turn around. Queen said angrily. Fine, fine. Hansen reluctantly turned around, feeling envious of the silver fox. While he was forced to look away, the silver fox was being allowed to freely enjoy the delight every man desired. After that, the silver fox jumped back to Hans Senator, but he didn't hear Queen say anything. Can I turn around yet? He eventually asked. Give me a beast soul armor. Her voice was cold once more, a sign she had mostly returned to normal. Sure. Hansen turned around to look at Queen and froze. The sun was setting, turning the ocean into a beautiful vat of molten, glittering gold. Queen, in all her elegant beauty, was sitting before the scene naked, with her arms wrapped around her busted chest. Her round shoulders, sexy bones, slim waist and bendy legs, in the light of the setting sun, she could have been mistaken for a mermaid queen. Still looking, Queen hissed these two words between clenched teeth. Eyes were built to watch things of beauty, I cannot ignore their desires. Hansen slumped his shoulders while he spoke. He pulled back his gaze, brought out his bloodscale armor, and gave it to Queen. She donned it immediately, and the armor concealed her voluptuous chest. Although you could make out slender curves, the overall sight was less arousing. Still, she had a beautiful face. It was the face of an elegant goddess, one who no man could touch. You looked better earlier. Now you look too cold, Hansen said. 
Don't think saving me grants you a free pass. I still want to kill you, and if you say another word about my body, I'll cut you down right this second. Queen directed a furious gaze towards Han Senator if eyes could kill. He would have been diced into pieces already. Fine. I will stop. Hansen closed his eyes but started to smile. And don't think about it, either, Queen added. The smile Hansen was giving her was unbearably smug, making her believe he was memorizing something he had no right to. I am afraid I cannot do that. This mind is my own, but I cannot fully control which fond neurological pastures it desires to revel in. Hansen opened his eyes as he spoke. Queen gritted her teeth and said nothing more. She did look mad, though. I think you look better when you're mad. You look quite feminine, Hansen told her. Queen thought she must have done something truly awful in her past life to have become acquainted with Hansen in this one. Hansen tore the clothes from her body when they last met, and he had pretty much done so again. It seemed as if all her most embarrassing moments kept occurring with Hans Sr. Eventually, Queen calmed her mood and became cool again. She resolved to try not to be so short-tempered, lest something even more embarrassing happen. After all, Hansen had saved her, and she'd feel terrible if she did something bad to him. But whenever she opened her eyes and saw Hansen, she got incredibly angry and her temper rose again. So, she turned around and decided to gaze at the sea instead of Hans Senator, she asked. Where are we? I don't know. My primary concern was shaking the white tiger, so I took a number of twists and turns. I don't even know which direction the island is in, anymore. Hansen blinked. Queen furrowed her eyebrows and said, Leave your silver fox here. We'll come back, but for now, we need to go get some food. There's no need. I can handle it. Hansen placed the silver fox on the back of the whale and then jumped into the water solo. A while later he returned, carrying a fish that was two feet long. He skinned and deboned it. Then, he cut the meat into thin slices and picked one up. I can. Queen thought Hansen was giving it to her. Before she could reject him, however, she noticed Hansen was instead feeding it to the silver fox. She quickly closed her mouth and blushed. Oh, you want some? I can give you some. Hansen heard her half sentence, so he picked up another slice and brought it to her. Come on, open your mouth. Queen felt as if she was going to explode, as more and more blood pumped to her face. She clenched her jaw hard and didn't say anything. She then moved to sit behind Hans Senator without looking at him. She grabbed a slice of fish by herself. Hansen slouched his shoulders and placed the fish he was holding into his mouth. He held the silver fox and sat in front of Queen. He and the fox happily shared their portion, dividing it evenly between them. When it came to the last slice, he picked it up and started to put it in his mouth. But before he could take it all, the silver fox jumped onto his arm and bit the other half of the fish. Neither of them wished to let go, which annoyed Queen. In her heart, she asked herself, what sort of person in their right mind would fight for food with their pet? But Queen felt like something was wrong. The lips of the silver fox and Hansen were connected, but the silver fox had just licked her most beautiful trophies earlier. Queen's cold face suddenly turned all red. She turned around and went to the head of the whale and looked out at the ocean. What did I do to upset her this time? Hansen was surprised because he was just playing with the silver fox. He had no idea why she was so mad again. By now, they had both acknowledged that they were lost. The whale had been swimming for half a day, with no sign of land. Chapter 607 Mystic Plant There was a giant creature swimming across the sea which almost resembled a moving island. Seeing it, Hansen and Queen did not even dare to breathe, and they steered the whale in another direction to avoid it. With the silver fox on board, the only creatures they were likely to meet would be insanely powerful ones. The two had been lost at sea for half a month, and this was the second time they had seen a creature like this. Fortunately, the creatures never paid them heed and would instead continue in the direction they were headed. They waited until the giant creature was out of sight and let out long sighs. After another half day, Hansen suddenly saw something green on the horizon. It could have been an island, he thought. We are saved. There is an island in the distance. Even if there is no one there, we could at least find some real food. All this time adrift, all we have been drinking is fish blood. I'm getting sick of it. Queen looked happy at this news, too. The entire time they had been on the back of the whale, they had been eating fish meat and drinking fish blood, and she too was starting to hate it. As the image of green drew nearer and nearer, it revealed itself to indeed be an island of sorts. 
The hills were quite steep, but they were short, and it was decorated with much foliage. There were no tall trees on the island, but there were many berry bushes. The berries they contained looked like delicious little grapes. Queen summoned her wings and flew over to take a look. The island wasn't too big, and it didn't seem to be populated with any creatures. Both feeling confident about their newfound parcel of land, they disembarked and climbed onto the island. Hansen looked at the red berries and thought to himself, these berries can't be like those red mushrooms, can they? Queen had already ventured inland. After a brief search, she found a pond hidden among the hills. The prospect of fresh water excited her very much. What are you looking at? Queen noticed Hans and squatting near the bushes. She furrowed her eyebrows. I am wondering whether or not I can eat these things. I am getting tired of eating fish meat, and I am keen to eat something fresh like this, Hansen answered. Don't randomly eat stuff. Let's stick to the fish, Queen told them. Although she was sick of fish meat, as well, not all plants in the world were safe for human consumption. The berries did look delicious, but who knew whether or not they'd cause problems if eaten. I think they're okay. I'd say it'd be okay for us to eat them. Hansen continued to observe the berries, and from the knowledge he had received from Professor Sun, he was sure they would be fine to eat. Queen ignored Hansen and simply returned to the sea to catch more fish. She was happy enough to be able to cook the fish meat, and doing that was certainly better than risking the consumption of curious, unknown berries. Although Hansen was sure they would be okay to eat, he didn't take any. Hansen had a question burning in his mind. Why did the berries, while edible, grow in such abundance on the island? And why were they wholly untouched? While they were out at sea, they saw many birds flying overhead. And yet, there was nothing in the remote vicinity of this island. This made Hansen believe something was wrong. Hansen fought back the desire to try out the berries and decided to take a stroll around the island, find out what he could, and see if he could witness anything strange about the place they had ended up on. The island wasn't too large, and a regular human could walk around it in half a day. With Hansen a top golden growler, combined with his abilities, it didn't take him long to scope out the place. While the island wasn't too big, the hills inland were strange. The rocky hills were not too high, standing at about 20 meters tall, and from afar, one could mistake them for overgrown pineapples. The weirdest thing was how identical each hill was to the next. Hansen climbed a hill and looked around. On the tallest hill, he caught sight of a lotus-looking plant. It looked like an ordinary lotus, with seven leaves and a bud at the center. It was also pure white. Hansen frowned. Lotuses tended to grow in water, or at least in very moist soil. He had never seen one grow on a hill before, which made him question whether it was really a lotus. Seeing as it was just a plant, Hansen didn't think he'd have anything to be afraid of. Carrying the silver fox, he decided to ascend the hill. Upon reaching the top, he took a proper gander at the seven-leaved flower. Taking a closer look, Hansen confirmed that it was indeed a lotus. Its snow-white petals were all folded around the fist-sized lotus cup inside. This was different than the usual green ones, as this cup was snow-white on the inside, too. It was semi-transparent, and there were many red seeds on the inside. However, it wasn't very big, which indicated it wasn't fully mature yet. As Hansen continued to observe it, the silver fox jumped out of his arms. It used its own nose to sniff the lotus and blinked as a human would. Then, it curiously circled the lotus as if inspecting the flower. After a while, the silver fox decided to lie down next to it. Silver fox, do you care to tell me what that means? Hansen asked, while looking at the silver fox with a puzzled expression. If the silver fox wanted to eat something, he'd usually gobble it down without a second thought. He had never waited for his food before. The silver fox's face suggested that it did want to eat the plant, but the fox continued to just lie down next to it. Hansen wasn't sure what it was thinking. Do you want to wait until it is ripe? Hansen thought of this possibility and asked the silver fox. But the silver fox could not reply. All it did was squint with its eyes and continue lying there. It was almost as if it were guarding the lotus plant, like a watchdog. Hansen saw smoke rising near the ocean side which told him Queen had already gathered some fish and was most likely cooking it. When he reached down to grab the silver fox, it bolted out of the way as if it didn't want to leave. It then sat down, unmoving. Even if you want to wait until it is ripe, it could take a while. No one is fighting for it, so let's go eat some food and come back. Hansen comforted the silver fox and tried to grab him again. 
But again, the silver fox refused to budge. He had no intention of leaving the lotus and seemed resolute in his decision to guard the plant. With nothing he could do about it, Hansen decided to walk back to the ocean side. As he made his way back, he thought to himself that lotus must be some good stuff. Otherwise, why would he be so stubborn and stay there? He is rather picky when it comes to food. No, I can't let the silver fox take it all for himself. I bet he is waiting for the lotus seeds. Otherwise, he'd have munched it all at first sight. What other reason could there be for him to stay there and wait? Hmm, but how can I take them away from the silver fox? If the silver fox decides to fight me, how can I expect to look after it in the future? Many different thoughts and questions now plagued Hans Sen's mind, and he wasn't entirely sure what to do. The silver fox was refusing to leave that spot, and it was going to wait until the seeds were ripe. Stealing food from it would be a difficult thing. Chapter 608 Ripe Lotus When Hansen returned to the ocean side, Queen was using her sword to skewer and cook fish meat. Although the fire was only fueled by vines and sticks, it seemed decent enough to last. Hansen saw a few other swords propped up beside the fire as well, each packed with meat. The slices of fish were gold, and the oil sizzled on them in a tantalizingly. Hansen had to ask, is this for me? What do you mean, are they for you? I am planning to eat them once they are all done, Queen responded. Can I have some? Hansen asked politely. If you want, suit yourself. Queen did not look at Hansen once, and continued to stare at the meat in her hand. Hansen smiled. He picked up some meat and took a bite. Unfortunately, he should have waited, for his mouth burnt with the heat. Still, this fresh fish tasted divine compared to the raw fish they had been eating previously. Where is your fox? Queen watched Hansen eat like a madman and, feeling more relaxed, posed the question. I took it back. Hansen blinked as he told her. Really? Queen looked at Hans Sound, not believing him. Summon him so we can all eat together. There's no need. It is just a pet. Ignore the creature. Hansen thought Queen had learned something else about the silver fox when it healed her, but he wasn't willing to admit it. Okay. Queen didn't inquire any further and simply continued cooking her meat. Hansen ate eight slices of meat. With a bloated belly, he fell backwards into the sand. After a large exhale of content, he called out, Awesome. Queen ate a few too, but when she was done, she returned her beast's soul sword and started walking off towards the hills. What are you doing? Hansen sat up and asked, worrying over whether or not Queen would find out about the silver fox and lotus. I'm just going for a walk, Queen replied, already walking off to the hills. I'll come with you. Hansen jumped up with a fright and thought to himself, I really can't hide the silver fox's reason for not coming back. It wouldn't be difficult for Queen to discover where the lotus and the silver fox were. After ascending a small hill, she caught sight of them both from afar. She turned around and looked at Han Senator with a cocky smile. She turned back and began walking towards the fox. What is that? Queen pointed towards the lotus as she neared the silver fox. I don't know, but the silver fox refused to leave after finding it. Hansen explained. Queen took a closer look at the lotus and began to rest near it without responding. The next day, Queen asked Hansen, Are you leaving? If the silver fox isn't leaving, then neither am I. Do you want to leave first? Hansen asked, blinking. If we meet again, we will split it in half. Queen looked at Hansen, but it didn't look like she wanted to leave. What half? It is a pet. You want to fight for food with a pet? Hansen's heart was saying no, and he was only pretending. If he eats it, I don't want it anymore. If you take it, I will accept half, Queen said. Why would I want it? This is for the silver fox. I am not a pet. I don't need it, Hansen told her, sharply. He was starting to feel a little annoyed. Queen didn't say much, and she remained near the silver fox, guarding the lotus. The silver fox was guarding it, which made me think I had a chance. But now there are two people guarding it. Hansen thought to himself. He was also starting to believe that the silver fox was a girl. Otherwise, why would it be behaving like Queen was? That was the only explanation for how selfish it was being. Hansen never thought about the possibility that he was more selfish than the silver fox and Queen combined. They stayed on the island for four days. The snow white flowers started to wilt, but they did so slowly. Only two petals fell off a day. Since there were so many, heaven only knew how long it would take for the entire thing to wilt. The lotus seeds on the inside were growing bigger, as well. They looked like blood crystals, 
and they continued to grow fuller. They emitted a pleasant fragrance, and smelling it brought comfort and relaxation to their minds. That must be some good stuff, but how can I take all the seeds without Queen and the Silver Fox noticing? Hansen watched the lotus intently each day, all the while fostering a plan to take it from the others. Hansen was not sure if he could beat them both, otherwise, he'd just grab it. Half a month later, the petals had all come off. The lotus itself was now like a plate. The blood crystal seeds were so round and full, they looked like rubies the size of a pigeon's egg. Hansen had yet to come up with an idea that would allow him to claim ownership of the seeds, but all of a sudden, he heard the shriek of a bird. He saw a green and bluish colored bird that didn't look too far removed from a peacock. With no idea where it had come from, Hansen saw it fly madly around the sky, calling as loudly as it could. It also seemed to be afraid of the three of them, which stayed its desire to come down. The silver fox now looked nervous. It stood up and looked at the peacock in the sky as if it were an enemy. Hansen and Queen were shocked. They understood that it was most likely a super creature, seeing as it paid little heed to the silver fox's presence. This made their faces bleak. The peacock continued to circle them in the sky, refusing to leave. But neither did it want to come down. It seemed as if it was waiting for the seeds to ripen, just like they were. Where did that bird come from? Why would it be out here at sea? Hansen thought only the silver fox and queen were competing with him for the seeds. If things had remained that way, at least he had a fair chance of obtaining a few of them. But now with a super creature in the vicinity, who knew what might happen? Perhaps even the combination of Hansen and the silver fox wouldn't be enough to fight the super creature. While Hansen was feeling depressed amidst these thoughts, suddenly heard a sound at the seashore. Looking out to the ocean, he watched the waters boil. A lobster with a purple shell that was a dozen meters long emerged. It remained afloat for a brief while, summoning up tall waves. It then moved on to circle the island, without getting too close. Crap! Another one. How many creatures want these seats? Hansen felt frustrated. He didn't know when and where another super creature might arise, but fortunately, no more decided to make an appearance. Aside from the peacock and lobster, there was no sign of another one coming to vie for their seats. With one of them taking the sea and one of them taking the sky, it would be impossible for him to escape now. Let's fall back. If we get surrounded, there is nothing we can do to fight them, Queen calmly said. Silver Fox, come. Hansen shouted at the Silver Fox with a tone of gravity. He was afraid if the Silver Fox stayed here to guard, he would quickly be overwhelmed by the two super creatures. Even though it was a super creature itself, its strength had limits. Chapter 609 Snatch Luckily, the Silver Fox wasn't too stubborn. Despite its craving for the seeds, it still leapt into Hans Sin's arms when called. Hansen took a long sigh, and with Queen, ran off. They didn't draw near to the sea, either, so they tucked themselves into a hidden spot near the base of the hills. Shortly after they left, the peacock-looking bird swooped down to where they had been. The lobster also came ashore, madly snapping its pincers as it rapidly scuttled inland and up to the hill where the lotus resided. The war for the lotus had begun. After observing the lotus seeds, it seemed even the peacock acknowledged the fact that they weren't yet ripe. So, instead of waiting, the bird turned around and screamed at the lobster. The lobster, with its claws snapping, skittered towards the bird. Its large body and shell didn't seem to slow it down in the least. The peacock opened its wings and took off into the sky. It broadened its feather train like a fan in a display of hostility. Beneath its green plumage was a collage of impeccable eye spots that emitted a blue light. When Hansen looked into the eye spots that decorated the peacock, he felt dizzy. He almost felt as if he was going to faint. Don't look at its blue lights, Queen said, already having closed her eyes. Her purple light was swirling around inside her, signifying she had already activated her gene lock. Hansen did what she bid and also used his hands to cover the eyes of the silver fox, but still, the blue light somehow managed to pierce his eyelids. He quickly turned around and moved to hide behind a rock, which brought him instant relief. Queen hid behind a rock, as well, with neither of them opting to open their eyes for a second. For now, they could only rely on their ears. Hansen used Jade's skin to activate his gene lock, as it didn't require him to have his eyes open. With it, he could survey the entire area and reconstruct the entire scene without looking. The giant lobster looked drunk as it rampaged to the left and right in response to the peacock's blue light. 
With its foe affected so badly, the peacock found an opening for its attack. The lobster's shell was unbelievably sturdy. When the peacock feistily pecked it, the only damage it sustained was a white scratch mark. Hansen watched their combat in awe. While the lobster may have seemed to be at a great disadvantage, its shell proved to be a most hardy defense for it. The peacock couldn't do anything to hurt it. The blue light from the eye spots across the peacock's plumage continued to make the lobster dizzy, however. Without being able to deal damage, they both seemed to be at a stalemate. But still, they had both come here for the lotus seeds. If the peacock could keep the lobster suppressed long enough for the plant to fully mature, it could quickly grab the seeds, gobble them up, and fly away. All while the lobster continued flailing around as if it were blind. What should we do? Hansen asked himself. There is nothing we can do. The peacock's blue light makes others dizzy. Even if we closed our eyes and rushed in, our eyelids aren't strong enough to block out the light entirely. And how are we supposed to fight two super creatures with our eyes shut? We'd be stabbing in the dark, Queen replied. Hansen did not respond. He suddenly smelled something quite pleasant and noticed it was coming from the lotus seeds. The lotus was starting to emit a red light, and a red fog crept out of it, masking the area in a red haze. As ominous as it looked, its scent was delightful and strong enough to be smelled from every corner of the island. The seeds are about to mature. Hansen continued observing the fight between the peacock and lobster, still of a mind to get the seeds before anyone else could. He couldn't wait until some time after they had matured because the monsters would be upon them, swallowing them all in one nibble. Compared to the size of the peacock and lobster, the seeds weren't even big enough to get stuck in their teeth. The silver fox looked like it wanted to jump out of Han Sin's arms any second, and its ardent desire for the lotus seeds was readily apparent. However, when it opened its eyes to take a look, it quickly buried its head in Han Sin's chest. The blue light was an extreme deterrent. While Han Sin was wondering whether or not he should rush over there, an ill feeling swept over him. A noise came from the sea. Even more super creatures are coming? Hanshin wondered in annoyed bewilderment. Using his seventh sense, he quickly surveyed the seaside. What he saw frightened him a great deal. All around the island, a vast host of different creatures had come, all of the mind to grab the lotus seeds for themselves. There were giant fish, giant shrimps, and even monstrous clams. There were many more that Hansen could not even describe. A large group of creatures marched their way inland in the direction of the lotus. Holy smokes? What are these lotus seeds? The pleasant smell even makes them ignore the silver fox's presence. Disregarding the existence of the super creatures on the island, they all seem intent on taking the lotus seeds for themselves. Hansen was more than surprised. It was difficult to wrap his mind around what sort of substance would actually incite so many ordinary creatures to muster the sort of courage required to go up against super creatures. In the sky, many more sea birds and flying creatures appeared. Without fear, they swooped down for the lotus seeds, ignoring the presence of the super creatures that were locked in combat. But when they entered the zone that was bathed in the peacock's blue light, they all crashed to the ground. It seemed as if ordinary creatures could not withstand the light at all. More and more creatures arrived at the hill, only to die upon their immediate arrival. Some were killed by the light, others fell victim to the violent thrashing of the lobster and peacock. It wasn't long before a vast number of bodies had collected to build a hill of their own, one that was dyed red. Let's fall back. It's too dangerous here, Queen said, as she started to retreat from the scene. Hansen noticed the rapid advancement of the seed's maturity and didn't want to fall back empty-handed. After mulling over what to do for a good while, he passed the silver fox to Queen. Take him out of here. I will go and try for the seeds. But the silver fox jumped away, not wanting to leave either. His body was unable to even stand straight in the light, almost as intoxicated as the lobster. Although the light could not deal the silver fox damage, it would have been difficult for it to exert the strength needed to go up, get the seeds, and get out. You get out of here. Don't worry. I'll give you some of the seeds after I collect them," Hansen told the Silver Fox. The Silver Fox either did not hear him or was too stubborn to leave. It wanted to grab the Lotus Seeds despite its incapacitation. Hansen grabbed the Silver Fox and forced it back. It was behaving like almost any other creature, giving up everything it could to take the Lotus Seeds. The Peacock and the Lobster were still sealed in turbulent conflict with one another. If any other creature tried to ascend the hill, they would be killed in the midst of their battle. Winning the Lotus Seeds would be a most difficult prize. 
all of a sudden, from inside the Lotus, a bright light burst forth. It was red, and it beamed into the sky, widening like the bloom of a flower itself. The pleasant scent carried across the entire sea, urging even more creatures to come and battle for it. The Lotus was right. Chapter 610 Blood Crystal Lotus Seeds The creatures on the island were no longer intent on fighting each other. They each exerted all the strength they had in running up the hill to grab the seeds before the others could. The peacock was the closest, and with its boon of flight, spared no time in soaring there. Although Hansen really wanted to grab the lotus, he was slowed down by his need to prevent the silver fox from going out on its own. He missed his chance and was too late. As the peacock was about to peck and gobble the lotus plant, one blood crystal lotus seed appeared to crack open. More accurately, it looked as if the blood crystals were beginning to sprout two translucent wings, as thin as a cicadas. The wings started to flap, and they began flying away from the lotus cup. The flying lotus seed suddenly smacked into the peacock's face, making the giant beast fall back, screaming in pain. After the slight hit, giant red blisters scorched its face. It continued to retreat, crying in agony as it did. Then it took off into the skies, flew away, and did not return. The lobster seemed to ignore what had happened to the peacock, and instead vied to take its place and eat the lotus. But in the next second, blood crystals went airborne once again. They rushed into the lobster's shell. The lobster roared deafeningly. After sustaining the hit, even the lobster decided to retreat. In an instant, it raced off, skittering back to the sea. Hansen was frozen in place, seeing that the red crystal-looking things were not actually lotus seats. They were red wasps, shaped like little ruby gemstones. The end of each wasp had a lethal stinger. Hansen saw the wasps pierce the lobster's shell and peacock's feathers as if it were nothing. The massive blister that had emerged upon the peacock's face indicated how poisonous it was. To see super creatures like the peacock and lobster run off in fright sent a chill coursing down Hansen's spine. Now, he was glad he hadn't been able to get there before the other creatures. If he had been struck by one of those wasps, he'd have been in far worse shape. Many blood crystal wasps were now flying out from the lotus. Hansen wasn't sure if the plant itself that birthed the blood crystals, or if a mother wasp had recently planted the eggs. But no matter their origin, it was clearly a vicious trap, and it would yield him no benefit. Eighteen wasps now shot out of the lotus, carried by their delicate wings. The toxicity of their venom was as dangerous to an ordinary creature as it was to a super creature. The consequences of being stung were horrid. At first, a giant blister would form. Then, bones would turn to liquid. And finally, the body itself would inflate, growing larger and larger until it burst like a reservoir of pus and blood. When creatures were splashed with excess venom, although the effect it had on them was not as lethal as a straight-up sting, their bodies and faces were still left scorched with massive blisters. Run! Hansen grabbed the silver fox and ran off down to the beach. The blood crystal wasps were frighteningly quick, and Hansen had no idea whether or not his body could withstand their sting. Without the light of the peacock, the silver fox and queen were both able to open their eyes. The previously pleasant fragrance had grown lighter, and it seemed to snap all the creatures out of their prior days. In fear, everything now fled the vile trap of the wasps. With so many creatures strewn about dead and bloodied, the island looked like a snippet of hell itself. The creature death toll must have been immeasurable on this day. Two people and a fox ran towards the ocean. No creatures fought amidst themselves, or even thought about targeting the humans. Escape was the only goal on everything's mind at that moment. I thought I could reap some benefits from that lotus thingy, little did I know how big of a mistake I was about to make. Hansen felt like a fool. When he turned around to take a look at what was going on behind him, his jaw hit the ground. One of the wasps was headed in their direction. Like a red, blazing meteor, it was coming their way at a terrifying speed. When people are unlucky, they tend to choke when they drink water. With so many other creatures that are free for you to take, why the hell have you come for us? Hansen's heart was now stripped of all hope. Hansen's body steeled itself, blazing with all the power and might he had. His heart thumped like rhythmic thunder. As his seventh sense kicked itself onto a whole new level, his blood began to boil. Queen noticed Hansen was not any slower than she was, which surprised her. If Hansen hadn't unlocked his gene lock, there was no way he would have been able to keep up with her. But now was not the time to stop and question him over his deception. 
so she gritted her teeth and kept running as fast as she could. As they continued to run, she noticed Hansen was actually gaining speed. Soon, he had overtaken her. After a while, he was far ahead, she couldn't keep up with him. Hansen was also just noticing that his speed must have grown exponentially since he opened the gene lock. Although Jade's skin did not grant him the power to manipulate and wield ice, the amount of power he had gained seemed greater than what most people received after opening their gene lock. But his joy drained as he noticed the red wasp drawing nearer and nearer. Hansen was positive that its target was the three of them. If they weren't its target, it wouldn't have followed them as much as it did. But Hansen was not entirely sure which of the trio was its primary target. Was it him? Was it the silver fox? Or was it Queen? We should split up. Hansen yelled at Queen before going off in another direction. As he suspected, the wasp turned just as he did. Its target was indeed Hans Sr. Fudge. It really is coming for me and the silver fox. Despite having expected it, Hansen couldn't but feel compelled to swear. The wasps were way too fast. Despite his breakneck speed, the wasp had now caught up to Hans Sr. The wasp made its first attack. With all his power, Hansen dodged it while still maintaining his speed. The blood crystal wasp was so small, it was difficult to keep track of it at the speed they were both going. If it wasn't for Hansen's incredible seventh sense, he'd have been an oversized blister already. Although he was having difficulty following the wasp with his eyes, he cast the Dongxian Sutra and used his feelings to determine when and where the wasp would strike next. He successfully dodged each attempted sting. The silver fox, who was still nestled in Han Sen's chest, was quite alert. Thunder sparked in the wells of its eyes, but try as it might, the wasp was too quick for it to thunder shock. Han Sen was not sure how much longer he could go on. All he could do was keep dodging on his way to the beach. He had to get into the sea, no matter what. If other wasps decided to join the chase, it would all be over. It wouldn't matter how proficient he was at sensing their locations, dodging any more would prove too difficult. One more was all it would take to tip the scales. Dealing with this single wasp, Hansen was already exhausting his unusual talents of intuition and judgment. He couldn't use his seventh sense to lock down the wasp now, either. Queen had already reached the ocean side when she saw Hansen in the distance, having trouble with the wasp. Gritting her teeth, she summoned a throwing knife and threw it in his direction. But being unable to track the dizzyingly quick wasp, it was impossible to hit it.